A good technique can really help your snooker, but it's nowhere near as important as having a good cue action. So here's some simple ways to help you check your delivery and find faults, along with all the tricks to help you cue straight. This is Break From Life. Chance at least to get back into the frame. Welcome back and if it's your first time watching one of our videos then it's fantastic to have you here. How well you're able to push the cue through the white is fundamental to everything in snooker. Put simply, the better your ability to play straight shots, the easier the game is to play. And most of the time the thing stopping you cueing the ball straight is side spin. When you play any shot with side, the first thing you'll notice is instead of the cue ball running straight, it will skew off to the left or the right. Adding right hand side will usually make you miss a pot to the right, and adding left hand side will usually make you miss a pot to the left. This is also affected to a greater or lesser extent depending on how hard you strike the cue ball. But it can be quite easy to think you're striking the centre of the cue ball when you're actually queuing up to play the shot with quite a bit of side spin. And that could be one of the most common reasons you actually miss a shot. A lot of this is because when you're down on the shot close up like this, it can be difficult to see where the centre of the white is. Whereas somebody else looking along the line of your cue from further back may be able to tell that you're not aiming for anywhere near the centre of the cue ball. And this doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with the way you're sighting the shot. So how can you be sure you're addressing the centre of the cue ball? Well to help with that, I've created this thing. This is just a piece of paper with two folds in it with the width of your cue apart and a hole exactly in the centre. So when you fold it in half and stick the two ends together it's exactly the same width as a snooker ball. Meaning when you push the cue through the hole it's going to act as a guide showing you exactly where the centre of the cue ball is. It is a little bit wide but it's not that much of a problem meaning you can use it to practice almost any shot. And see what a difference it makes to know you're going to be aiming for exactly the centre of the cue ball. Just because I'm aiming for the centre of the cue ball doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be pushing the cue through straight. I needed a way to test it. So does this really help me play a shot without side spin? Oh, that's pretty good. As I expected, this didn't eliminate side spin completely as the white kept coming back about half an inch to the right of the brown spot because of an imperfect delivery of the cue. But it does mean I'm at least lining the shot up for the centre of the cue ball. But what about the delivery of the cue? Can we still improve on that? So just because you can find the centre of the cue ball and bring your cue in in the right position, as we showed in the previous video that's in the card, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to push your cue through straight. And there's various things that could be going wrong, such as your arm dragging your cue round your body or away from your body in more of an arc than a straight line, and that's before you get into the even more complex issues of how your wrist can affect the shot. This makes it very difficult to know exactly what's going on behind you, and often the more you think about it, the worse it gets. So a simple way to find out what's happening is to place the balls a cue width apart, with two of them close to the cue ball and two of them close to your bridge hand without being awkward or getting in the way. Setting up the balls like this gives you a very good idea of exactly what's gone wrong should any of them have actually moved when you play a shot. So I mostly push my cue wide and hit this red here. If you're striking the first two reds it's very likely that your arm is causing the cue to arc. And this is all down to the position of your elbow. Quite simply, the more you tuck your elbow into your body like that, the more the cue is likely to come round your body as you play the shot. Whereas the more you point your elbow out wide like that, the more the cue is going to arc away from your body in that sort of a motion. I caught this one, so my cue is actually arcing in towards my body. If I caught the other red, it would mean that my cue was actually arcing away from my body. No two players are identical, so the only way of guaranteeing you're getting your elbow exactly in the right place is if you're not catching either one of these front two reds. Though errors with your wrist make the cue move slightly differently. The difference is, if the problem's caused by my wrist, I'm likely to catch the back two reds. If it flicks out, I'm going to bring the cue wide and catch this red. And if I bring it into my body, I'm going to catch this one rather than the front two. Unfortunately, with your wrist, it's far more complicated. Both twisting your hand out in that direction 
or back in towards your body like that can cause you to cue across the ball in either direction. With your wrist, there's no simple way of working it out, and it's just a case of trial and error until you get it right. I would highly recommend, though, trying to play a screw shot, because this will guarantee you have to use your wrist in order to pop the ball. After a few goes, I found rotating my wrist around clockwise very slightly meant I was able to cue the ball exactly straight. If it's not a major problem though, I'd highly recommend leaving your wrist well alone, because if it goes wrong, it can destroy your entire game. The positive thing about testing a cue action like this is it allows you to find a technique that's right for you, rather than forcing you into a conventional position. This is just a good way to check everything's right, because your technique may look very unorthodox, but you may still be delivering the cue through in a straight line. But what could be stopping you body moves when it really matters? Have you ever noticed when you get a shot that you really need to pop, you can concentrate very hard on it and put everything into it? and you still end up missing it, and you're never really sure why. This nearly but doesn't quite have to do with how hard you're actually trying, and really has more to do with the way you're trying. What you'll often find is happening is you're tensing up on the shot, and you'll usually find that means you're pulling the cue too tight into your body. And if you actually give this a go, you'll be surprised how far you actually miss shots by that you think you're going to pop. I would recommend trying to play some shots in a tight feeling, intense sort of way. Where you're almost desperate to pot the balls. And then do the same thing again in a relaxed, just practicing kind of way. Where you're focusing on what you need to get right, but don't really care about the outcome. Then there's quite a bit of difference. Now I hate not having a proper solution to this because it's not exactly like I can say stop concentrating because there's things you actually need to think about in order to pop the balls. So instead I'll just hope you've forgotten I haven't given you a real answer as we find Harry from Hull in the United Kingdom. But it does seem to be the more you're willing the ball into the pocket and focusing on trying to play it without side spin, the less likely you are to pop the ball. But what if you want to play the shot with side spin? Well, as long as you know exactly what's going to happen and how you're going to play the shot, then there's nothing stopping you. And the next video in this series goes into detail to show you exactly what you need to do to play these types of shots. And remember, don't just watch, play. And make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.